I, I don't want to flex on these hoes. <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to WLTM AM, the uh, in internet radio show about music and 100% orange juice, the world's best video game. Uh, today, uh, we are joined, as always, by uh, your, your, your boy, Cruz. <laughs> Say hi. Speaking of Cruz. Oh, uh, my name is Cruz, and I'm an Speaking actuary science major, so I'm <laughs> better than all of you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Nice try. We got, we got, we got your boy Cameron. We got, we got your boy Cameron. Menya Zovut Cameron. Uh, I am the real actual science major. <laughs> uh, I, you, one can say I'm the actual actuarial science major. <laughs> Bars. You know, I only rap on the weekends, so we got we got you, yeah. you, you your boy Alex. Uh, hi, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> and I, you got you got me, your boy Jack. Uh, today we we're talking about four albums again, like always. Quattro, and, uh, Quattro albums. Um, uh, bilingual listeners out there. <laughs> <laughs> Gang weed. <laughs> don't say gang weed. <laughs> don't promote that. Who wants to start? Who wants, who wants to go first? Oh, Jesus Lord. I'll go first. Start? I'll go Alex. first? Okay. Jesus is Lord. Uh, Shit. The album that I picked this week was Interplanetary Class Classics by... Uh, psychedelic experimental rock band the moon landings who are uh, a super group of sorts uh between two bands one of them called eccentronic research council and another one that you guys might have heard of called the fat white family which has um yeah an, album, I know an album or two that fall into the uh you know the sort of like mu core sort of um you know, genre. They fall into that category. Genre. Um, and this is a, a group between, uh, like a collaborative project between them, which um, is like a build of a, there was <gasps> a, there was an album that the ex Research Council put out that like invented a fake lead singer of a band. And so his band was the Moon Landings. So they did like an album as that band, like as a fictional band, um, which was this one. And um, it's a little different than something that like that I normally listen to, but I still like it a lot. And I um, would love to hear what you guys thought about it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of noticed. I, I noticed when I was listening, I was like, "This does not really sound like that much of an Alex thing." <laughs> it has vocals. <laughs> that that it, is, it, it does have vocals. It has vocals that are not s- slow and sad. Uh, well, I mean, you can be fast and sad too. <laughs> That's just punk. That's right. Punk, actually, yeah, you're right. That's cruise music Rip again. Fast and sad. Yeah, it's fast and sad. That's, uh, put yeah. that shit on my fucking gravestone. <laughs> fast and sad. <laughs> <laughs> that is the embodiment oh, of me. Emo, you saying bull. <laughs> no. You saying yeah. bull, I saying dead. <laughs> I, so I, I I have not I, I had not heard of the Fat White Family or the other bands that uh other Ex- made a... Eccentronic Research Council. Yeah, n- never heard of either of them. Um, and I also had not heard of the Moon Landings either. Uh, I thought I thought, I thought this album was good. That was all right. It was, it was it was. Wait. I don't I don't want to say I liked it a lot because it was like. Because I, I I did there were there were parts of it that I didn't like, but I like I liked it. It was it was enjoyable. Do you listen to a lot of psychedelic experimental music in your spare time? Is this uh, jack music? I mean, I, I listen to some stuff that you could say is psychedelic. Like, I've listened to a <laughs> King Gizzard, um, but <laughs> I guess I should say not all. Like, I mean, not all of this album is straight psychedelic, but there's, there's yeah. just there's elements. I, but yeah, I I definitely caught on to the fact the uh, psychedelic stuff and i i enjoy yes i i take lst because i am i do drugs i'm a little sad dude drugs are cool 
and you should you should do them, kids at home. We are we are sponsored by the drug company. God is fake. Jack off. Do drugs. We're also sponsored by gang weed. But oh yeah, yeah, of course. So so I recently had an epiphany. All right. Okay. All right. So this this is a fake band, quite technically. Okay. Yeah, it's like some gorilla shit. And their name is the Moon Landing. Okay, so okay. Uh, I, I don't see where you're going with this. Can you have, can you elaborate, Cameron? <laughs> okay, okay. Jack, why I, are you laughing? I, since, since, since you have a double-digit IQ, I, Jack gets it. Because his IQ happens to be the triple digits. However, I will repeat. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. a fake band. Okay. And the name of the band is the Moon Landing. No, wait. wait, what is that supposed it, to mean? What is that? The moon landing. <laughs> Or fake. <laughs> Keep asking questions. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Just say whoa. This, this is advanced. Getting fucked on. I'm glad that Cameron caught on to why I really recommended the album. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually about to get killed by Chris for presenting new ideas. <laughs> Never, I lied. All right. So I yeah, that's. I should also mention that the way I found this album was um, I, the very first thing I did before I listened to any of their other like any of their music was I watched a uh, a what's in my bag type um, video starring the moon landings. They it's called Bands Buy Records. Hmm. They went to a record store and bought some records. What they buy? Um, they bought like uh, some Leonard uh, he, the the guy who's the lead singer bought like a leonard cohen song that i had never heard of on like a 45 and um the other guy who i believe is the drummer i'm not 100 percent sure uh bought some music for his child because these are like old guys this is like probably dudes in their 40s or 50s fucking boomers yeah <laughs> Dude, i love ageism uh, so that's, that's, boomers. How you, that's, that's how you know because they make good music, and only old people make good music now. Yeah, only old music is good. So yeah, and all, this is kind all of all what we're listening music. to right now is bad. Some shit my dad would listen to. I feel like it makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense that this album was made by um old niggas. I'm assuming they're old. Uh, I mean, it sound. See, sounds like new wave shit to me. That's what well, yeah, uh, new wave was made by old folks or they're old. Yeah. Now. Well, I meant, I like, sure this it. new wave of, oh. like, the, the current wave we are writing. New, new wave. Yeah, yeah. New, new Wait, wave. It's probably, like, the f- sixth or seventh wave of rock. <laughs> yeah. It's probably, it's probably more than that. <laughs> uh, so what did, it, what, did it, uh, what did you think, Cameron? What were your thoughts, aside from right, so... it being a reference to the fact that the moon landing was fake? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you elaborate on that? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> 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 woo! Woo! All right. Um. So, I thought whatever the fuck they're trying to do with this album, they probably succeeded. And like, this, this, they probably like, you know, did what they wanted, what they set out to do. But I didn't like this album that much. It okay. was uh, it was all right. I don't like how they sing. I don't. Okay. Do you like Primus? Singing, singing, singing is a very strong word for it. Do you like Primus? Yeah. The lyrics. Like I don't like Primus. It sounds like Primus. <laughs> do, you, do you listen oh, wow. to? Do you listen to? You know, it does. Now that you mention it, wow! I, do I don't like Primus. listen to music from the '80s where it's more talking than singing? I don't listen to music from the '80s. Okay. But I listen to one album from the '80s. Yeah, that's different. I mean, he is talking a little bit there. Uh, I... Oh wait. Uh, was... But besides that, um, so like. I felt like Vessel should not have been the opening track. I felt like it, it was something that deserved a, a more of a lead up to it. Um, I like Sweet Saturn Mind, and then um, you keep going. I like Noof the Noof the Noof the Pape Pape Poppy Noof the Poppy Pop, and then I liked uh, the end of Blue Hansa, man, because it had like the thing, the the noise. But I didn't really like this album that much because I, I don't I don't feel like I like the like the sound aesthetic that they were doing. Um, there's a word for that that I can't think of right Tom? now. Tam timbre. No, no, well, timbre yes, but something else. But I I, I, I can't remember. Soundscape, soundscape, soundscape. The okay. so little moon runescape um, knockoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 
I don't really understand how you could say that when like Golden Drugs and this sound was, very, very similar. Like they are the same. They're almost about the same oh, tonally. I, dis- I disagree. No. I disagree completely. They, they don't sound the same at all. I don't even see how you understand how you hear that. I think we can at least agree that they're both experimental in their own regard. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say like they, they are they are both experimental. Yeah, yeah but and they were I both think that's rock music. But like the the tones were pretty pretty different. I but um, yeah. What did you yeah. think, Chris? Yeah, not nah, like the two. Nothing's the same. But well, we'll 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 get to that album though. We'll get to it. All right, Cameron. All right, you got to be right all the time. All right. But, I mean, um, and, and, and on an and objective Miyusaki, conversation, Miyusaki plus two defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you Cruz, you Cruz, Cruz, how do you, right, Cruz. Cruz, how do you feel about it? Um, I thought it was good. Um, I definitely agree that Vessel shouldn't be the opening track. I think it should be Sweet Saturn Mine. But everything else is pretty good. Like I really like the um, the vocal harmony on the strangle of Anna. Sounds and nice. then, like, the ending, like, with Neuf de Pop and Glory Hole and Lufanza, like, just a great fucking album. Like, there's nothing really mm-hmm. to complain about. I also, I mean, I should say that I also agree that Vessels shouldn't be the first song on the album, but personally, I don't think it should be on the album, period. Dang. You don't, you don't like, like, I like that song. It's, like, my least favorite song on the album, I think. With my I favorites don't... being Sweet Saturn Mind, um, Black Hands, IDS, Strangle of Anna. I, mean, I, I, really thought... like, I like the way that IDS builds where it's like it just kind of starts off like like normal and then it just gets more and more like chaotic loud and just like crazy as it goes on to like near the end where he's just saying the same thing over and over again hmm. yeah. um I but Vessels I don't I just don't think Vessels is that great of a song personally it's definitely not one of my favorites on here I, th- I thought it's an alright song but it um I don't really have any opinion about you know, whether Vessels should be the opening track or not, but like um, Vessels does play into a recurring theme from the album that I noticed that I didn't really care about at first, but once I realized, like, once I noticed, I was like, uh, this is kind of annoying, which is that um, basically every single um, like basically every single track has a hook that is one or two lines long that is very repetitive and very drawn out that's mm-hmm. that's the whole point they they, they, I, they pick a line and then they stick with it and that's the whole I mean, that's, that's the whole album i mean that, no that's that's like and s- songs can do that and that's fine but it's when it's the entire like, like it's the nearly whole every song the album does it it becomes repetitive it, yeah. like, it becomes, i think it becomes just like a cliche way of structuring your song and but i think that to, to be fair i think that a lot of what this album is trying to do is like they're they're paying homage to like they're not trying to invent something new here it's very much like like it just reminded me a lot of like the new wave shit from like the late 70s and 80s that my dad listened to a lot which is just like here's we're gonna have some very you know i can't say simple but just you know the rhythm is gonna stay very you like uniform throughout the whole track and it's just gonna be like here's some nonsense Here's a chorus that you can sing. It's not going to be too long because we want you to remember what it sounds like. And then, you know, we're going to keep going and we're going to make the song not much longer than like three or four minutes. Um, with like, I guess, one or two exceptions. And then it's like, that's what they're going for. Because I think it'd be, and I think it works because it's, it definitely like, it evokes that a lot. So I think that like part of even just the song structure itself is kind of like, going for that but i think i think the thing is i think it would almost be worse if it wasn't like that like it would make less sense i think to me if it was like the songs were like structured in a way that took away from what i thought they were going for if that makes sense but i feel like it would just make less sense to me and sound worse yeah. but maybe that's just like that's just what i was expect. like i mean also i've listened to the album like before and i guess i have a certain expectation going into it like after that Right. But I guess on a first listen, I can see where you're coming from if it's not something that you like. I mean, if, if it was not like it's a ma- major problem, right? But it's something that um, it was big enough for you to notice it. It was, it was, 
it, I actually, I on my first listen, I did not know actually realize it until I until the very last song when I you know when I was like, oh, this song is long and all it is is them saying the hook over and over again, which is you know which is fine. But then I and then I looked at the title. And I'm like, okay, the title is the line of the hook. And I looked at like all the other songs, and I said, "Oh, that title is in that song's hook, and it's the entire hook. That title is in that song's hook, and it's the entire." Hook. And it was just, it was just something that was uncanny to me, and it was like, "Wow!" But it's, it's like, you know, it's something that's not like killer. You know, it's it's something where it's like, um, it's like whatever. Yeah, it's it's, it's something where it's like. It was kind of annoying when I noticed it, but um, not something that like is absolutely destructive. Yeah, it's just something that you're not, you I don't still enjoy. I still enjoyed the album for the most part, but it was it was something where it was like I felt like they could have been a little more adventurous in like separating the songs from each other structurally. Yeah, this is their so, only so. So what you're saying? Their only full album so far. So who knows if they if they go anywhere else from here? Right. So like they could have just named every song something different and it would have been fine. Yeah. No, like... it's, it's, it's not. No, it's, it's not. It's not just. No, the title part is, isn't even important. The title was just like when I was actually looking at it at the at the track listing after I listened to it only once and I couldn't tell. Like that was when I noticed it, but it would it would still be something that would be kind of annoying. It would it would be just as annoying if the songs were called something different because there are some songs on here where you know it isn't actually the same the one but i mean it's it's just it's just something that makes it more a little more obvious but it doesn't make it any particularly more or less annoying when the i think it's kind of like, like a post-rock thing where it's just repetitive to develop atmosphere and if you don't like the atmosphere that's making then you're just gonna hate it like mm. three point I, mean, I, I enjoyed it so that is actually kind of fair it's a post-rock thing i i see where, i get where you're coming from though where it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna be if you're already gonna be like a certain degree experimental and like do something a little like out there, why not like like lean into it as hard as you can and like really do some like you know like like if you're right at the point where it's like this is gonna be marketed as experimental, like why not go you know the full nine? Yeah, I like, mean theoretically at least you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I mean I, I, I understand what you're, I understand what you're saying, but I actually tend to um. Think... So if, you tend to, if you tend to disagree with that, then you gotta. I, I actually, your I point. mean, it's not, it's not that I, it's, it's like, whatever works works, right? But like, I, I tend to think that like, you know, it's, it's really cool when people will do something that's experimental, but like, temper it with something that's a little more traditional, or just straightforward, so that like, it, the experimental comes on easier. Um, but like, even though, I, I didn't necessarily like, think of this album as particularly experimental even like which i mean i can see what you you mean when you say it is and i can i can see if they were intending for it to be someone experimental i can see it but i didn't feel that in it was often very significantly different from other psychedelic rock music that i'd heard i think that part of it too now is we're at the point in time where going back to some shit that was like part of the formula almost 40 years ago is like the new experimental yeah, I mean that is kind of true, and um, yeah, we're it um, and you if, and if you're thinking about that way, then yeah, this you could say this album is pretty experimental, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's all this album. This album's a fucking love letter. Yeah, and I and and I like that kind of stuff, so it's I enjoyed it. But Does um, anybody else have any uh, questions, comments, concerns? Why didn't you pick the um? The other version. The a other version. The deluxe edition. Yeah. Oh, I um. Why? Why would you ever pick a deluxe edition? Just, yeah. Well, because no, all it, it is is it, demos and it, shit. It's just yeah. the uh, yeah, like yeah. what it is is, and it, a lot of it's also just like remixes of the songs that are on here. I've never actually listened to the deluxe version. I've only ever listened to the full album. Although the first time I listened to it, I thought um I was on a plane ride, and I thought the plane was gonna crash at one point. I turned it up really loud. <laughs> like, well, I, I should say, I, I thought me saying, I guess me saying, I thought the plane was gonna crash is like, like the plane just started shaking and making like it was just turbulence as like you know that shit happens. 
but and so I just turned it up really loud to get it like to not hear that shit. And um, you know, uh, that's completely unrelated. But I never listened to the deluxe version. I hope they put on new music though. Yeah, I liked it. I think it'd be cool. Worth noting, I don't like the fat white family very much personally. Interesting. Um, it's a little. I don't like, like fat white families myself. If you I'm saw, um, I can link the album cover at some point. Like you might have noticed. Oh, it I, I looked at it on spot. I looked at it on Spotify. I haven't seen it. Honestly. It's the it, yeah. It's the uh, it's called Champagne Holocaust. I think is the name of the album. Something like that. It's just an album cover that I've seen a few times around on like chart chart threads and stuff. Like I've just seen. I don't even know if it technically falls into like that category, but I know I've seen it at least a couple times on different people's stuff. Right. But it's a little more like experimental. I don't even know if I would really say psychedelic. It's just a little more weird. Mm. But, does anybody else have any other closing comments? Um, the uh, the moon landing is hard to fake, <laughs> and landing on the moon is hard. I think they're equally as hard, and um, mm-hmm. oh, they're, e- they're is, both equally as possible. I think considering the historical context, one is infinitely harder than the other, but, you know, <laughs> you know, to the, to the listeners at home, I'd just like to pose one question before we move on. Do you think that uh, the Soviet Union would actually let us fake the moon landing? <laughs> uh, who would like to go next? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I have one closing statement. This, this, okay. is, this is a bit of an illusion, but... Um... I thought this was the better space album of uh, the week. So that's a. What does that mean? I mean, I know, I know what you mean by that, but that's a hot take if I've ever heard one. Uh huh. Who would like to go next? Cameron, would you care to go next? Uh, sure, dog. I right, so my album was uh, hold up. I never remember the name of this uh, this album. Oh, actually. and before it's Cameron like goes, I would actually like to thank Cameron personally for actually at least listening to the whole album that I recommended this week. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, that is very true. Uh, we're, we're already leagues ahead of where we were. Last week. I, I was this this album, although I didn't like it, I'm never gonna listen to it again. That's um, fine. At least was, you listen. Was, at least you actually listened to it once. It, it was a lot more listenable than um um your previous album and uh, the other space album. Which we will See, get that's to. also another blazing but... hot take. <laughs> what? Do you, are you talking about my album? He's talking no. about Cruz, He's talking about Cruz's album. Cruz's oh, why? Album. Why is Cruz's album a space album? It's not a space it's album. It's, 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 it has it's, a lot of space. Like, has, well, pretty, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, it later. It's but uh, it's You're probably right, by yeah, my yeah, favorite part about the album is that it's spacey. But. Is that what you mean by space? No, yes. that's, that's not what I mean by like it sounds spacey. Like like there's a lot of like space. It's like it, the, it's based mentioned... in like interstellar. Like niggas are on Mars. They oh, mentioned the word Mars in the opening. Yeah, yeah. They say Mars, they, they like say Mars two once. Times. Yeah. I know none of it actually sounds like space it... related. Obviously, but okay, I don't care. <laughs> okay, whatever. Right. We'll, we'll, uh, go get, go, Cameron. Talk to me about your album. All right, so um, my album was um by the prestigious um ultra popular golden drugs um solid band name um their album name was a little bit longer you know it was uh in the midnight sun or stubbornly persistent illusion sometimes i accidentally say in the midnight sun or persistently stubborn illusion um but it's not that it's what i said first (laughs) and um i found this album i was chill on youtube and um, I saw the album cover. I was like, that's a cool album Did cover. you see it in the I comment section? N- no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you I don't get it. In the oh, hey, all right, Cruz. All right, Cruz. Fuck you, too. <laughs> right, all right. All right. I see how this is going to go. <laughs> you see that? I see how this is going to go. You like that? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Can I continue? So, yeah, I, I clicked. I, I hit um, mouse one when I was uh, hovering over the album. And then I hit it. And I let it play. This is on YouTube, of course. You know, uh, shout out you block origin. Um, and I listened to it. First time I listened to it, I was just like, eh. I was chilling. But I wanted to listen to it again, so I did. I liked it more on uh, repeated listens. A um, couple of interesting things about this album. Um, this is a band out of Oakland, California. So, you know, got to rep the bay, I guess. Hey, Raiders aren't and, doing too um, well this season, I'll tell you what. Damn. I, I wouldn't know about that. Uh, I, I, haven't spoken to, 
I haven't spoken to Big Mike in a little bit. <laughs> I haven't spoken to him ever, actually. Uh, but, um... This album is very, um... It's kind of... Sim- it has, like, things similar to post-rock in a sense. Like, there's parts where it's, like, mad chill and not a lot's happening. And there's parts where it sounds like actual music. <laughs> and, um... I, I like the parts where it sounds like actual music more, but the parts where it, it, it doesn't sound like actual music are welcome, I guess. I feel like they, they certainly serve a, a place there. And I really like the lyrics, or at least the ones I understand. Or at least um what I interpret the lyrics to be, because I, I hear the lyrics as something that they're... I like, like, sometimes I know that they're not, but what I hear them as is, like, just objectively superior lyrics so what, what you're so, saying uh, is you I like you, you, you don't like the album itself you like your your interpretation of the album that's the same thing as liking the album i would argue i would i would definitely agree with that yeah <laughs> yeah um, okay i would have to say yeah. your interpretation of the album is much stronger than any opinion you can pull up of it like hmm. yeah more or less. And I'm doing whack a popo so I can't talk, so... <laughs> um, I, I, I really enjoyed In the Midnight Sun or Stubbornly Persistent Illusion. Also, hold on. Long before I get into this, how the fuck are you gonna judge free parking when fucking Golden Drugs has 400 monthly listeners? Here's the deal. Free parking had less than a thousand players yeah, on Yeah, yeah but Golden Drugs their... ain't touring every, with Drake. All right? Every one of them. <laughs> you're not doing with Drake. You're doing with Drake Bell. <laughs> Is there a difference? <laughs> Yes. But <laughs> Golden oh, Drugs. I also bought this album on Bandcamp, I think. How much Golden is it? Dr- Golden Drugs. Um, I don't remember. Song is... that's, it might have been free. That's that's why I say oh, I think. Fucking free album. Hell yeah. Well, you bought it for free. Like... Yeah. Golden Drugs' most popular song has 23,000 plays. Woo! Yeah, that's some fucking Uber commercial shit. So, so yeah, co- relative to free they parking, it is they some Uber that. commercial shit. I'll say that. Golden um, Drugs, more like. Give us money, my yeah. right? <laughs> Y'all are a part of the culture here. Y'all here fucking listening to the fucking real music yeah, or some no, shit. Like, y'all are yeah. like 86k, uh... Uh... 16k, uh, I think. Some other bullshit, yeah. yeah so, so, Cruz, you liked it? Oh yeah, I thought it was really good. I thought, I like, especially listening to it, like, um... Back to back with, uh, Moon Landings. I thought it's just... Oh, that's why you thought they were somewhere. Yeah. Trolling. That's fucking... It's good. Um, my favorite... Like, my favorite part was probably Wayward Snout, where, like, they, oh they get into their... Uh, At the end? They get into their shit, and then, like, they slow down, and they get into their shit again. And that's because it's also ten minutes. But yeah. that's that shit I really respect. Songs in yeah. Epic. Yeah. As long as it's not the part where they're fucking tap dancing on the mic for four minutes straight. Oh yeah, I fucking <laughs> shit made me want to fucking about? rip my ear. That was like the low point of the album for me. Wait, where was that? It's like two and a half. It's like two about. and a half minutes into the song for like a minute and a half straight. Wait, now? Yeah, they're just playing tap dancing sounds in the background. Oh, I don't mind that. That's it. Just hurt to listen to it that just part. Hurt your ears. Well, you yeah, have weak it, ears, the, I guess. The rest of the song was fine. Yeah, and I think the uh, I think the intro is Ooh. strong with Appalachian Blood yeah. and Struggling Attacker. I think that's probably the strongest part about of the album. Is oh, the wait, two I can't songs. Agreed. Like those two first songs are like, I, you don't even have to make other songs. I just clock out. I'm like, this shit's good. Uh, I actually don't like Struggling Attacker as much. My favorite part of the album is either um, the end of Ghost Song or the end of Wayward Snout. Mm. Mainly just because of what he's saying or what I think he's saying. Um, because only the first three songs have, like, the lyrics released anywhere. And then the the last three songs are just, like, you just kind of have to guess. Shit, they're so indie, you probably email them and be like, yo. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> you, you send me a I picture of the I... lyrics so I can, like, write that shit down. I thought that anyway... Yeah. Found that Golden Drugs was, like, some super enigma person. Isn't, um, is that not true? The band is definitely multiple people. Uh, I saw a video of them playing live on their Facebook page. Mm, there were certainly it. multiple niggas, maybe but maybe it was one nigga. Else. I don't know, yeah. Fucking Facebook. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my favorite part is either like on um, Wayward Snout where they're just saying, um. Oh, Alex won. 
Like, we can't hurt you. You're just so beautiful. But I still feel hurt. You still feel hurt on my shoulders. So some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we know yeah. or, or it's just the end of Ghost Song. Like, when it becomes an actual oh, yeah, song. Yeah, Ghost Song's good, too. I forgot about that. I yeah. just spilled some of my water. Those first three songs are fucking ridiculous, actually. For me, personally, the high point's Appalachian Blood. Like, the first half of it reminded me of, like, a, um... Like a 60s song, almost. Like, just the way that, yeah. like, the, it's just, like, the instrumentation Sergeant just kind of... Sgt. Pepper, but better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, brought me back there. I thought that was really cool. Did people think Sgt. Oh, Pepper is yeah, good? Yeah. Shut up. Have they listened to it? No. Well, you, you really the Beatles don't. album when? That album literally just, <laughs> yeah, the, like... The Beatles have been coasting for a while when they come out with new material. Yeah, I mean, that album is literally just a worse version of, like... Anyone who's been influenced by that album is made in the past, like, 30 Definitely. years. Definitely. I don't that know. album was also made 50 years ago. And, and, well, yeah. And it, it's just worse. Than that album was made an entire made boomer now. ago. It's a whole <laughs> boomer. A whole boomer. I really only remember, like, the parts that I really, really liked or really, really didn't like. Like, everything else is, it's it not even sense. like, oh, it's not even like, oh, if you, like, when you guys say certain things that I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that part. It's like, oh, I just don't remember that at all. But I'm like, I really remember hating that one part of wayward snout and i remember really liking the intro to appalachian blood and i remember really liking the little middle section of ghost song and that's like about all i can actually remember about the album is this the album Even where you can hear the listen. guy suck in air when he's singing i can't remember i remember um, one of them does it if it's um he, or just like once i i i remember someone like matt saying like when I, we were listening to harley poe he was like man he sucks in air a lot i'm like holy shit i can never not hear that and now, I've, when someone sucks in air when they're singing, like, it just. I just, just can't not. Hear I just always hear it now. And I'm fucking ruined. Ain't that some shit, dog? But it, it, I think out of everyone, it could be. It's it's either mine or yours, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, either, it's either Cameron's or mine, probably. Yeah, I don't. There's, they don't say enough for in the donkeys for it to be. Me. For them to be sucking in air. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> When you suck in penis. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I have to agree. Like you, you, you hear the really good parts of the songs, and then you just like clock out. I, I really need to start riding the bus because I didn't ride the bus this weekend. I like I, yeah, I, I, I really don't get to like really experience the albums like as yeah, as I much think, as I would really like to. I think this album is really structured so that the parts that are actual music you like really get into, and then you just kind of zone out on the parts where. Okay, so it's just not me like, being a piece of shit. Well, right. but then my I mean, my argument for that would be yeah. why don't you just like, I think that's the make... purpose of the album. Uh, I mean that's fair. About yeah, like, I, I mean purposes. I know what you're gonna ask, and then it's like, what's the purpose of any post rock? We're like, well, no, I think my thing is like, there's just there's just parts where it's like, if that's the whole element, like, why not just. Like at least for when it's stuff like this where it's not really a build up, it's like music, and then we have like interludes, and then we have more music. I'd say that, there's at, at that point my argument would be like, why don't you just have the length of all the songs? Like, well, they don't, don't want to make a Joyce Manor album, no. so. Uh, no, I, I, I like, like well, everything I like the length of all the songs already. as they are. That's just my opinion because it's like at that point, like if you just cut out the one and a half minutes of trash from Wayward Snow of just tap dancing. And then you well, kind yeah, of come like a really. You think it's trash, but like it, it just doesn't sound good. Why the fuck is it in there? It, it ruined the. It made not want to listen to the rest of the song, and I was like, wait, the rest of the song is not even that bad. It's just this one part's garbage. Nah, I don't mind it because it, it it definitely wouldn't be the same because music like this relies a, a lot of just like trying Nonsense. to put some shit into the listener's head and just like make them feel some shit. Because, like, sometimes when I listen to this album, I just, like, I it feels like nothing. Like, I'm just, like, it's whatever, you know? Yeah. And sometimes I listen to this album, and I'm just, like, in it the whole time. And it just depends on my mood, I guess. But that's just kind of how it goes. Shit like this is just, like, it's very much hit or miss. Just based yeah. on the nature of I it. Agree, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah. half ambient, half not ambient music, almost. Yeah. yeah ambient, it it yeah. relies very much on just, like, the timings working well in people's heads. Well, I feel like it also benefits from focus. Like, if you're listening to this album, like, like all you're doing is just sitting there listening to it, you're going to get a way different experience than if you just, like, you have, have this on while you're doing something else. Yeah. Because then I what think you're this gonna... album works well, like, either way. But... I mean, I think it works. I mean, I still think it's 
it's fine. Like, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's a blue face baby. <laughs> um, I think that it's just, you gotta, there's like, you gotta take into stock, like, what you're trying to get out of an album before you decide how you're gonna listen to this. I, I like, definitely relate to the idea of the, uh, of not, um, so I, I listened to this album mostly, um, while I was at work doing dishes and Today. shit, so I wasn't actually, no, I, I listened, I listened, I listened to the album like five times. I listened to all the albums a lot of times this, this week. Um, okay, same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, believe you. With one exception. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like it was because I was like not just focusing on it and I was doing something else. It was hard for me to, you know, keep track of like when songs began and ended. And I think with this album in particular, it's it's pretty hard because a lot of them are multiple parts where you have and they kind of flow into each they don't yeah. like hard flow into each other but like they do flow into each other and because they all have so many different little, little, little parts that are all like wildly different it's it is kind of hard to keep track of but I I enjoyed it a lot um I really um I really enjoyed there was there's a um in Appalachian Blood, there's a, um, it opens up with, like, this kind of guitar riff thing. Mm -hmm. And in a later song, I think it's, uh, the last one, might be, there's, um, I don't know, actually. There was one part where it was, um, where, in a later song, where a different chord progression happened, and I was, and it just felt like it had looped back around, in a sense. And it was, it was, it was a, nor I enjoyed it a lot, even though, like, I don't know if it actually was the same or even, like, remotely similar, but it felt like it, and it was very... I liked it a lot. I was in a... Yeah, I, was, I actually listened to this album a lot. I think I listened to it the most of any of the albums this week. It was really... I like it a lot. It's just good. Um, I would say this is actually a lot... actually experimental. Whereas the mood landings is like, you know, retro kind of. Like, this is. Like, this felt like they were trying different shit to me, which is, uh. And it was fun. I agree with you there. I don't think that if we're gonna have to call one album experimental, this week it would definitely be Golden Drugs over Moon Landings. Yeah. Like yeah. Every day. I definitely. I don't think the experimental thing on Moon Landings is fair. I think it's it just in a weird category because they made a fucking uh, a King Crimson album in fucking 2017. <laughs> I mean, there's still experimental elements. It's just not the forefront of everything. I think yeah. it's mainly just like the spooky space noises and shit like that. Yeah. Well, like, this isn't like... This is like experimental rock, whereas Moon Landings was like rock experimental. Yeah. Also, yeah. the fucking... The pedals or distortion they put on this guitar is fucking like nasty but it's great like it they they fuck like it's so yeah, yeah. crunchy it's the crunchiest fucking guitar sound i've ever seen he's got like eight pedals or some shit like he's really fucking with that guitar like he's he's you he can't tune to that shit like it, <laughs> it's half a computer at that point like, he's, it's, he's just playing a synth so like Sounds yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Instead of playing a guitar, he's just fucking killing the transmission. The fucking signal he's outputting. It's actually sick, actually. I think it's my favorite part is how fucked his guitar is. I actually enjoyed a lot of the, uh, like, vocal effects more than... Like, the, the guitar parts were good. But, like, the, um... Like, there's certain parts where, like, just the vocals are just, like, really just weird. And it just sounds really good. Like, I, I like in Friends, like, the, like basically all of it, ha all the vocals in that song, how he's, like, doing this kind of, like, slow draw, but there's, like, layers to it, so there's overdubs and shit, and it, there's, I think there's some, like, phasing effect on it, too, and it's just, it just sounds really good. But there's also, the, like, the beginning of the way where it's, it's now, there's, like, he's got, like, um, there's, like, there's like two layers and one of them is like a clean vocals and the other one's like has like like a really fast like rotary speaker effect on it and it's just really cool uh yeah there's a lot of cool effects on the album 
uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, he definitely spent a lot of time just fucking with his voice and recording vocal tracks. Mm -hmm. And it worked nicely. Because yeah. his vocals are clear, clean, like it would just not work. This would be weird as shit. Yeah. Yeah, it has yep. to it has to be in like the same tone or same like um like same vein as the the fucking instruments are just getting distorted to shit. Like mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it just fits with it. Also, like the distortion just sounds like what Matt says, make it fucking nasty. Like that's just what they, <laughs> they they try to make just gotta make it fucking nasty and they just roll with it. Like <laughs> they probably wrote the song and clean and then they're just like, just fuck it. <laughs> and then it, it was the, probably the vocalist who was fucking with his voice. He's like, "This sounds way fucking better. Just fuck <laughs> it. Just let's go. Let's just kill this. This sounds so fucking sick. Just ran with it. And I really respect that. Yeah. You can actually fucking hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, album album art out of ten. Oh yeah, that's uh, just pretty radical. Yeah, this is probably maybe that's why I like, thought it was like an enigmatic thing. For some reason, I like. I feel like I read a comment or something that was like, "Like this is what music should be about today. It's about the music and not about the people or something." And I just kind of thought like, a dude in a skeleton costume takes the stage <laughs> and like, just does some nonsense. <laughs> that sounds Maybe like what I they would do, honestly. Too. Maybe I had like a dream at it, so I'm just mixing it up or something. I actually just don't remember. Nonsense. Yeah. This might be my favorite album cover, like ever. Mainly because there's not a lot of strong contenders. <laughs> It's not bad. The album cover gets a higher rating like, than the overall album, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Have you seen El Uvetti? Oh, no, El Uvetti. It's, um... Oh, my God. It... It's some fucking power metal band where it have, like, golden dolphins jumping through infinity signs. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> back in, like, the fucking... That shit... Is, that has yeah, to be the best the album. I think it's Hunting High and Low by, um... Someone. But that shit's so fucking dope. It's like so f like early Photoshop days. Like they just put <laughs> shit in it. And I fucking love it. There's it's certainly <laughs> not hunting high and low. You just came up with that. that, that well, that's the name of an album, but it's also the name of their songs. But uh, yeah, that, huh? That, I think that's my favorite. Oh 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 oh, oh wait. Stratovarius. Stratovarius. Yes. I kept wanting to say, like, it's like some Viking metal shit, and I couldn't remember. It's definitely power metal from, uh, yeah, fucking the Europe, so. What's the name of the album? That's the name of the band. And then Hunting High and Low is one of the songs. Is it a cover, probably? It's Infinite. Infinite, yeah. Well, I, gu I guess, yeah, the, the dolphins through the infinity signs. And there's, like, a spaceship, and, like, a fucking planet and like stars and i think there's a rainbow in there like this is fucking dope shit you gonna be picking that one next week <laughs> i haven't listened to power metal like unironically in a minute <laughs> do, you mean you, do you mean that you ironically listen to power metal i'm pretty sure if you actually listen to power metal you're listening to it ironically <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wouldn't exactly disagree <laughs> I can I can find some better meme shit to fucking to play anyway. Some better power metal. That's just actually hilarious. <laughs> like all the one that does like seven ABBA covers. Like we can we can, we can that, and that shit slaps. We can do that one. Oh, oh well. Yeah, we uh, are we done with uh, golden drugs? Do you have any closing thoughts? Do we have any? Uh, Cameron's gonna email the guy so we can get some fucking exclusive photos of the lyrics. Yeah, I'm all about well, the only notes for this album. Let me, see, let, me see mark, so. let me see the dollar bill you wrote the lyrics on. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. that shit's money. What are you trying to say here? <laughs> that shit's cash. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just think of this shit in the moment. So you're like, what the fuck do I have to write on? I got a dollar bill in my back pocket. Let me write on this. And you write down, like, put my voice in Blender. <laughs> okay. Blend it. Will it blend my vocals? Like this, is lowest, this is the lowest rated album of the week, but all the albums have a positive rating by the Alex oh, scale. <laughs> I start reading these bitch ass albums. Everything else is, uh. You know, we're north of Blueface. <laughs> I think really that's all we can ask for. I'm gonna just give albums a binary score. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes or no? What does that mean? Yes yeah. or no? Binary, zero or one. Oh, okay. they, they, today there's a two zeros and two ones. So how Damn. do you know? <laughs> really unlucky. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Seeing as I know what the two ones are. <laughs> oh. Yeah, who'd like to do that? What about you, Jack? You like, Jack I, no, no, I guess we'll start with the fucking zero, alright? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Cameron literally can't be a nice person and just, like, actually let people talk, alright? He's always got to shit on something. I hear talking about your album. So, I, I picked Sun Damaged Youth by the Donkeys. Mainly because the person who recommended me the Donkeys... Alex, um, didn't, God, it's Friday. he hasn't, uh, he didn't listen to it, and I don't know why I decided to pick their first, their, their latest album to listen to, but I thought it was pretty fucking good, like, I, it, it's, it doesn't push any boundaries, it, personally, I think it's the best that they can do, and it Dang. sounds good, and, like, they're always doing a lot, like, you can always, the mixing is really good. Because you can hear everything, it's on like a same level. Like nothing's overpowering something else. It's not just fucking, just noise. Then you can you can actually distinguish the bass, which I can never do when I listen to music. So that that's always a plus, and the fucking bass lines are sick. And like the only thing that's a little bit louder than everything else is the vocals, and the vocals happen like a couple seconds every Sometimes. song. Like yeah, it's it's not the vocal point. So I. I just really like how uh, spacey it is, and like, you really don't have to like be paying attention, and if you are, like, you'll notice things. I 100% agree. Mm. This album is, um, I still think I like the self-titled better, for other reasons, but this album is really, it's really great, and I really respect the fact that of the donkeys that i've listened to like you basically get a different genre every time you listen to a different album like believe me, i didn't know that i needed neo surf rock in my life <laughs> which which yet again i really the space the space thing that cameron's been alluding to the whole podcast is not it's just not accurate for those of no, you that, not listening, no, listening actually, one of like, them. sounds like it came from it, space, no, it doesn't sound actually. like it, it's literally it just sounds like a surf rock it's all surf yeah, rock. I, I there's know. no space elements at all the only space yeah. element it, is the part where she says if you're living on mars come back to earth at some yeah, point i mean it's just like there's <laughs> fucking toxic covering, like... if, you, if you say jupiter on your album it doesn't make it a space album if it is a <laughs> call, call train I don't know why you're so angry. Even if it wasn't a space album, I, mean, I wouldn't I mean, like I'm, it. I'm just saying that like, it, it's just not what you're calling it. That's nah, what you're okay, that. so... I, really, I really, really fucking dig that uh, experiment, that fucking, you know, I love that fucking uh, Romanian folk music album, uh, Golden Drugs, that you recommend. It, like, it, it might as well be. Like, I don't know. You listen to it and like... you're just like, this is a space album. This is spacey. It's like, well, I, I don't think you... I'm not like, saying it's spacey. I'm saying it, it's space themed. You're saying it's a space album. I'm literally it's saying... It's not space themed. It's it literally not space themed. There is no, no. Literally there's space one. Themed. There's one line there's, about there's anything an space inter, There's an intergalactic radio station, or at least but intersolar what, system. What I'm saying, but it's not like or intrasolar system even. It's like, but before we get back to that, the songs that I thought were really good is the song "Sun Damage Youth" and the song "Pure Rat" were my <gasps> like the two super highlights for me of the album. Especially the Sun Damage, like the song Sun Damage, I think that's probably my favorite Donkey's song now. Because that song's just, it's really, it's really beautiful. It's like just a really nice song to listen to, which I think is something that this band, there's never a point where it's like, some bands get to the point where it's like, let's just make some shit. That's like, let's just put one song on this album that's like going to challenge the listener. It's going to be like, let's put an album on that, that challenges you to not skip it. And, like, they just don't do that because they're like, we, we respect the people that listen to our music. And we're going to make something that people um, who aren't looking for the wrong thing are going to want to listen to. And that's why I think the Pure Rat was interesting, too, because it's like, here's just a straight-up surf song. Like, a surf rock song, but it's, like, it's futuristic still. Like, it has, like, elements of, you know, not 50s surf rock. Like, it sounded like a song out of a Tarantino film is what it really reminded me of. 
Like, it really reminded me of, like, some shit they would have been listening to in Pulp Fiction, if I'm honest. Which I think is a, which I think is a, a good thing. And, um... I'm glad they weren't. The plot of the album for Cameron, who I guess only listens to certain, he only has certain buzzwords, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, like, so, oh. California was stealing water. And so they, like, they, they excommunicated, and they excommunicated them from the United States. Yeah, they so they're, so they're like, yeah, they're, they're I, like I their own thing. And yeah. there's one part where she says, "This one goes out to the people on Mars. We're missing you yeah, down here on Earth." And that's yeah. literally the end of any space oh, reference. Yeah, I, I, and those are the only parts of the album that I like, coincidentally. <laughs> so, so the fact that it's a space <laughs> album, which is also not, is a better, is a positive to you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying thing. that like why, it's a bad thing. Why did we do a 180 on calling it a space album and then when we get to actually talking about it, it's like, no, it's not actually a space album. Um, because I just said it to troll, boy. Because you just said it to troll. Did you actually listen to all the songs in this album? Because that'd be a fucking first yeah. album. <laughs> I, I did, but it was hard. I listened was to hard. half the album and then I had to go to class and the thought of listening to this album again fucking hurt me. More than any other song we've ever listened to in our podcasting careers, I mean, albums, this album, fucking, the thought of listening to this album again after listening to it the first time. This is not a podcast. You're not called a podcast. It fucking, like, it made me want to die. I was like, fuck, I have to listen to this stupid ass album again. I'm glad you did. Did you listen to Super Discount? Yeah, I I listened to while I was reading Socrates, so it worked. All right, so, you know what, it, it doesn't matter. I, the I only music that Cameron Socrates likes either. is when people, like, bang on fucking trash cans, so, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, just take that shit with a grain of salt, honestly. If you listen to this show, just know that the only music Cameron listens to is music that isn't actually music at the core, or just people talking over garbage beats. <laughs> <laughs> this album sounds any, like... any music that feels okay to listen to, Cameron's like, nah, hard pass. Uh, yeah. get, it, get it away al- from me. On repeated albums, I hated this album less. However, I'm still, I'm still never listening to this garbage ever again. I respect I like, the fact. I like that, the yeah. idea of that album. Okay, I I'm like the you idea didn't give it the ice that like there's like underground niggas with bleach hair fucking <laughs> spray painting some graffiti. <laughs> In, in um, Banish, California, because they got banished due to water theft. That shit, I, I like, I like the whole like thing. I just don't like the songs. I like Cherry Cheetah talking to me. It's very soothing. <laughs> Cherry Cheetah. But, yeah, yeah. I like because because um 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 Mac DeMarco has an album where it's like like a bunch of different radio stations. Is it also a space album? Of that. I think he says uh, I think he says Mars on that album one time. Shut, shut, album. Shut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you guys talk about space <laughs> albums for one more minute, I'm gonna go insane. Essentially, this album sounded like they were trying way too hard to be catchy, and it was just like boring, and I hated it. It's not catchy. Um, I don't understand how you can get that. What do you mean? Okay, it has, it has like it has like four hell? lines in every like six songs. Yeah, half the song like... is instrumental. Yeah. No, he, he, okay. If you think this album is not at least trying to be catchy, you're fucking retarded. These... No, it, okay, it's not trying to be catchy no, whatsoever. Okay, but, but when you're, you're an idiot. Like, this is literally. You're an idiot. It's not an argument, Jack. You you are. Cruz, okay. You're honestly greatly underestimating how many lyrics are actually on this album. Like, yeah, but what what was what he's. Oh, whatever. I like I, I, doesn't I even the lyrics. Answer for him. The amount of lyrics actually doesn't matter. You can have catchy instrumental music. This album is one hundred percent easy listenable, listenable music, and all the songs that have lyrics or have hooks that are trying to be catchy. Like it's not. There's that, no. Can you define trying to be catchy versus being catchy? By the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I'm, 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 Alex, it's... Cam, let me ask the question. No, no, no. No, he asked me the question because I'm the one that said it, okay? You can you can give your own answer after, all right? What I mean is that it would be catchy if I liked it, but I don't. So, so... Well, how can you determine that? 
What, so I don't like then it is catchy. Music. Yeah, so if, so if no, it is you, catchy, you defined it as just catchy. It's just not catchy, catchy to you. Yeah, because it's bad. <laughs> I'm glad yeah, it's not catchy to me. Yeah, I'm fine with that. It's not catchy to me. But you just said it was catchy. It's not catchy to me. Yeah. But if, but if it was catchy, but if you, if you liked if it, it then it was it, it would be catchy. So it, if it was yeah, catchy exactly. to you, then it would be catchy, is what you're saying. Yeah. If, is, is is the essence? So it's so you're just saying nothing. No, I'm saying that it's bad. The album is catchy. The al- the album is catchy. Let's just let's just. Okay, so it's not trying you, to be catchy. It just is catchy. I I think I think it is. I you know I I heard fucking unusual and I'm like damn that's a hook that makes I'm, me. I'm just making sure that we have a baseline for what we're trying to define here instead of just it's bad because I don't like it, as opposed to I don't like it because I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, okay. I think it's something that Cameron we should have a, a class for you on. <laughs> no, I'm good. All right. This album, it's alright. It's alright. It's okay. It's, 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 uh, it's fun. It's catchy. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's particularly, like, amazing, though. It's like, it's, there's, it's, it's got great ideas, and then it's just like, it's not delivering completely, you know? Like, something that I, I got really caught up on after I listened to it for a while was um well actually I, I i noticed it the first time i listened to it i was um i was just doing something else and i wasn't paying attention and i felt like the album was really long for some reason even though it's not it's only 40 minutes but then i, I looked at the the track listing and i saw 21 tracks and i'm like what the hell and i realized like okay they're doing this thing with the radio station right the radio station thing cool idea i it's not not unique not not novel you know, you you had your your Mac DeMarco, you have your Queens of the Stone mm-hmm. Age. Other people have done it before, so it's not it's not novel, but it's a, it's a cool idea, and it's it's cool, especially combined with the, the the concept of like the the radiation California, you know. So okay, cool. I was very annoyed by the fact that the radio segments are separate tracks. <laughs> very very annoyed by that. Did you just listen to this while you were washing dishes? Yes, but like I, but like the thing is, it's like they could just have her speak over the intros of the songs. The intros, the intros don't have lyrics. None of the intros have lyrics. Well, if it makes you feel any better, the the point of her having the talking part is to is to because it's like if you look at it, it's not Cherry Cheetah presents this song by the donkeys. It's yeah, like, yeah, this, it's, is the, this is the band. It's we presenting a, a new band. I, I know. Music. But there's, so that's, there's. That's why it's a separate. That's why it's a yeah, separate. Yeah, it has to be a separate track for it to work. Yeah. Or else you're gonna I mean, have. It, or else I mean, you're gonna it, have it, the it, song it does, by the Savage Detectives, and I don't, I don't think that's. But I don't, I don't think you need to have the. Um, I don't think you need to have the the like fake artist names in the uh, track listing. I don't think you do. Where would I it think, be? I it could just be in the song. In in the no, beginning of the, in the, in the beginning of the song, as she's talking over the intro, she says, "Here's the Santa Anas," and that's all you need. That's no, all. That'd like, be boring. there's. No. What do you mean that'd be? Never, never. Mind. It, it, it looks cooler when you look at the track list. Oh, and yeah, it has like cooler. like the different bands. Well, but... and I think the thing is too. It like, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with Jack in terms of like, like it would definitely it wouldn't like ruin the album if it was just like if they combined it, you know. Like, it wouldn't make the album unlistenable or something if they just did the track listing different. Yeah. But I think that it's, like, the idea is, like, it's, it's like, depending on how hard you want to think about the process that goes into writing an album like this. Like, it's a concept album. So depending on how deep you want to believe and give credit to the band for how deep they want to go, it's, like, okay, we want to make this, like, you know... If somebody was actually in this universe and they were like, okay, I want to know what that song was. It's like, okay, well, she's like, okay, well, you know, this is, you know, it's like, here's a song. Here's where we're on Talks radio. And then we play some music. And then, you know what? I'm going to have a little interlude where I'm like, hey, that's been good music. We're going to listen to some more music. I'm your host, uh, Cherry Cheetah, and this is this. Like, they're trying to, it's trying to immerse. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, the thing is... The thing with the the immersion argument is that one the main reason the main reason I didn't like the way it is 
it, besides just looking autistic on the track listing, which is just me being autistic, that doesn't matter at all. But um, the thing that actually bothered me, that 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 bothered me from an immersion standpoint is the idea of if it was a real radio station, she would just be talking over the intro. Like in in other albums that do the same thing, and I and I listen to songs for the deaf to to check, to like to compare. Um, in other albums that do a very similar thing, all the radio segments are just at the beginning or the end of the song, and it's just not separated. A and real radio station usually doesn't go over the intro when they. Introduce you're things. dumb. Real radio no, stations they, they, do not they care. They go. They go straight over the outros and intros. They they do not want to waste any space. So, I mean, maybe maybe the the indie radio station you work for is a you know they uh they res- try to respect the music which most radio stations don't, but um, well, and I mean in in the Queens of the Stone Age album they actually make fun of that because they have one of the radio stations saying we ruin music so we, for everyone, but um, the um, yeah it was just like it was just like um, I felt like there it would have shown more commitment to the concept if it was talking over the intros of the songs and not not even not even like um like the exact is commitment to the concept uh congruent with a better album in your mind what do you think in 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 this case in this case yes if you're gonna put your pinky toe in you might as well just belly flop in 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 this case yes because um I, I do think that the, it would be a, that the, the album would have been better if the only difference was instead of having songs that say Cherry Cheetah present the name of the band, you just put that shit over, you like record it as one thing and just fade in and fade out at the beginning. Yeah, of I, the I, mean, song. I mean, not not necessarily exactly that way, but you, the idea, yeah, I think it would, I think it actually would be a better album that way, and because I I don't think I think anyone who actually cares about like the album experience will. N- will like it will not will, will like hearing the cherry cheetah parts so they won't mind that the cherry cheetah parts are just in the songs right the cherry yeah. cheetah parts are a third or a fourth of the song length of the song that, that yeah, comes but I'm, after I'm, I, I'm not saying i'm not saying that it needs to be exactly the way it is now just like put over it because that wouldn't work i'm saying that but the way you know the way you would do it with an actual like radio station, of course, is that like, as that as the outro of the the last song starts, then they start talking, and then there's a bit of silence as they start up the next song, and then they're starting over talking over the out the intro of the next song. So what it would be is like so if you have like a cherry cheetah segment that's thirty seconds long, right? You have about ten seconds that's over the end of the last song, ten seconds that's over over the blank space, and ten seconds that's over the the beginning of the next song. What's your thought and, about the fact that this is a futuristic radio station? Maybe they do things differently in a yeah, maybe, maybe they maybe they just maybe they were maybe they respect the 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 um and the music more. Who knows? It's 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 not a deal breaker. It's fine, but it's just something that kind of bothered me. Um, I was gonna say too that if you're, I mean, there's other there's also a portion where it's like if you if you still wanted to go with the trying to be catchy versus catchy argument, the fact that it's supposed to be in the framework of the album like shit they play on the radio like that's it's like it's something that has potential to influence the songwriting process it's like we have to make music that sounds like they would put it on the radio yeah and i i that's that's one of the things that made me think like okay this is this is catchy this is deliberately trying to be catchy because it's it is you know because they obviously are trying to sound like this could be like something i play on the radio and I liked the concept. Um, I think it's pretty interesting, from like, from a conceptual standpoint. Um, I didn't. I thought I another th- another thing that I did I didn't like relating to the radio thing part of the concept is the fact that the album begins with an intro that's not one of the radio sections. And oh, it's because it, that's the only part that the donkeys made. Yeah. yeah, that's there's only two donkey songs: "Sunday Was Youth" and "Radiation." The rest is K Talks Radio, Coffin Nail, I, I, Savage I, Detectives, I, 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 Santa I, Anna's, I know, I, get, I, I know that. I'm just saying that. I think I, I don't think know why that, you guys like, hate the two songs so much. Like the donkeys didn't do that bad. Shut up. <laughs> they weren't even the worst segment. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm just saying that. Like as, like as far as like 
It's another thing where it's like the the immersion of the concept, like unifying the album more. It would have been, I think, cooler if like. You know, the, the first track, instead of being, like, a prologue to the entire concept, the entire album, was instead, like, hey, Cherry Cheetah on, uh, on the air. Like, it's, it's her first start. It's the start of her shift. And she's like, hey, it's Cherry Cheetah on the air. Today, we're going to start with the, the donkeys. I hope you're feeling all right. The tox levels are whatever, whatever. Well, the donkeys and, are uh, a band so, now. So yeah, I'm, I, 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 <laughs> shut <laughs> up. <laughs> what I'm hearing, you can't make me, you can't Dude, make what I'm hearing is that Jack to. has a love-hate relationship with Cherry Cheetah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I, yeah, I think they, they think, she, think she broke his heart. That's he's so salty about it. <laughs> I, I, just, I just want more. I just want more Something Cherry Cheetah. that I think is worth mentioning, too, is that the origin story for the album is the band was at Disneyland and found a journal in a trash can that had, like, basically like conceptually like what the opening track is what the prologue is and like the story of the sun damage youth song so and, then the con- and then the concept of like they pulled the, there's, there's, drive a, there's a radio station like right. this and i feel like there's a certain degree where on the one hand obviously the person who's listening to the album if you like if you start with the cherry cheetah beginning or shifting and she's like like the tox levels are this like there's a yeah. point where you kind of realize like oh this is in the future like this is something else i think that the intro gives you the kind of like this is you know there's due to fight with surfboards and skateboards and this is music by them for them yeah i just, so I, I, just think feel... it, I think it adds more than it takes away i i i see what you're saying but i disagree i i i i, I I really like having like. I I would really prefer it if like the. All right, Jack. Let me ask you a question. This is All right. So well, let's, 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 no, 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 no. no. I know uh, what you're gonna I, say. I, let me think. No, I'm just I'm just saying I would prefer it if the if the conceptual framing of the album was consistent instead of having two different things, just the one thing. Okay. If it was the same as go. the other albums I do. A similar yeah, yeah, Jack. Let's let's say thing. that you never listened to the Queens of Stone Age album, the or ever heard that mac demarco's first album did it because i know you didn't listen to that i have not heard that no um or any of the other people that ever done anything similar to this okay would i still have a problem with it yes probably i i mean i I, i'm not sure i would still have a problem with the 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 cherry cheetah tracks being separate but i would definitely still have a problem with the fact that the intro is different from the radio station intros also i think let, let, let let's say i agree that they're trying to be catchy and they're trying to be played on the radio right if you're, tr- if you're trying, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't necessarily think they're one and the same. Same, Jack! One and the same but... Jack, stop! But... If they if they want this to be played on the radio, you don't want to start your radio segment and then start one of the songs and then they introduce another radio station. There's a solution to that. So if they were actually generally trying to be played on the real life radio, which then they would not. have. Then they would, which they're definitely not. Which but is it, not what we mean by catchy, but... Yeah, which, which would have been an important yeah. distinction at the time that we had the original argument, I will say. I mean, I... It would have been very important to say they sound like they're trying to be catchy in the conceptual framework of an album where the album is them on the radio, rather uh, than they sound no, like they're no, trying no, no, to no, be catchy sound like, full stop, you, and then in the 10-minute sound... argument, there was no... We're not going back to this. No, no, I'm, 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 we're not going back to this. I understand now what you guys meant at the time, but the only reason the argument happened is because there was no clarification where one of you said, oh, by the way, what I mean is, when I say the radio, I don't mean the real radio, I mean the K-Tox radio. No, Alex, I never said anything about radio at all in the original argument. I literally just said they're trying to be catchy. Well, Jack said something about the radio. I I I brought up the the fact that they were trying to be catchy within the radio concept after one of either you or Cruz said it, but I don't remember. Um, but anyway, what was, what the fuck was I talking about? I don't even remember what Cruz asked Dude, me. You were literally just talking about Cherry Cheetah for ten minutes straight. You were trying to not want to hear her name ever again. <laughs> there's a solution to oh, yes, yes, not just solution. having the radio. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so life. so if they were genuinely trying to be played on the real life radio, right? If they, if they if they had the commercial viability for that, they would have radio edits of the biggest songs from the albums that do not have the radio intros. So, for example, let's say unusual which already doesn't have an radio intro right before it but let's just say for example say unusual is the catchy song of the album and it's getting played on the real life radio and in my hypothetical version of the album it has the radio intro on it 
Do you just make well, a radio you just, you edit, just, by just, the way? Yeah, you, you would just have a radio edit of the song that is just the same song without the fake radio intro. Anyway. And also... And that, and that is less work than just making it a separate track like they did here. That, to, to completely I mean, eliminate it, it, that it, as, it, a, situ- it is, as a situation. It is, it is more work, but I think it would be a better product. Like, that, it's, it's not... How many points would the album go up if it was just the track listing was different the way that you would like it to be different? Like, maybe like half, half a point. Not half even, a point. Not even. Not even. It's, it's not that big. go from a two to a two and a half in your mind? <laughs> no, I actually like... Cameron's I, I, I like this. I, I like this album. I like this I album. I forgot if Cameron's part. the ones who hates it for no reason. That's why. I, I think. I think it's for the most part. It's pretty good. I thought some of the um, some of the songs were um, a bit less, eh. And I, and I and like even though I realize that it's kind of typical of this kind of style of music, I wish some of the songs were longer. These um, like especially unusual, which is, is the catchiest song. I like it a lot. Why um, you put that shit on repeat, dog? I, I did put it on repeat for a while. It was good shit. Well, okay. One more pedantic complaint. In the song Pirat, the, yeah. the, the vocal sample that says Pirat is very obviously the same woman who plays Cherry Cheetah, but there's no, like, lampshading of the fact. There's no, like, there's no them, like, in the radio intro right before her saying like there's a special guest on this next track wink wink and that that the fact that there's no like call to that bother me but it's fine because especially well, how many especially... how many people in post-water apocalyptic nuclear california do you think are out there making music like, maybe not, it's, maybe not, it's, not maybe many it's meant to not be many but that's not many but that's why that's why it's that's why it's do you think that every time she would play pure on the radio she would say there's a special guest in this song or do you think maybe just the first time i mean but like it's it's. I say it every time I flex. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, yeah. There are definitely some people who would say it every time. Maybe Cherry Cheetah is not that person. But I think that for the, like the idea of, the album, I think it would be good. It'd be a better idea if it was just in plug. This is the first time that all this music is getting played on the radio. <sighs> I mean. I guess you have an argument there, but it, it did it just bothered me when I when I, I mean, know, like, like, I, mean I, I, think, I I appreciate that you're at least taking the time to have a discussion about it rather than taking the Cameron approach out, which is you know <laughs> like, you, do, you do you do you, but I I think that when you do think about certain aspects of it, you also gotta like take it the other way. Yeah, I mean, and so I, because I, adding I, something I, would it make more sense for her to be like there's a special guest on this new song that I'm dedicating to people who are on Mars that I want to come back to Earth. The most important part about this song is that it's me whispering <laughs> barely audibly the first time through pure rat over <laughs> okay, I, I, I think I think you you have that. Yeah, I I see like it that is true. If if, 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 mm-hmm. if if you yeah if you are really considering it as part of like the uh, conceptual experience, then yeah, it would make sense that it's not necessarily the first time that's being played and that she wouldn't do it every time. I can see that. That works. Yeah. yeah and... What? Uh, I I have I have one request of you. Yes. Actually, I have multiple. All right. Say peer. Peer. Say peer rat. Peer rat. Say peer. Peer. It sounds like you're saying pure. Yeah. Sometimes you are saying pure. Yeah. That, that's all I wanted. <laughs> you know, that, Cameron. I think I you did the same thing, and I I I, I was like, did he say pure? Like, I'm really glad yeah, that it, it sounds similar, but it just, I it. heard it and I just, I just needed that clarification. Do, okay, guys, now, do we have any, anything else to say yeah, about I Sunday? Have closing, I have a closing <laughs> statement. Oh, okay. no. oh no. I owe nothing to the donkeys or crews or the podcast to like this album. I reserve I, the right. The I, 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 I'm, not right. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. You owe I one reserve thing the, the podcast, right to hate to any discuss. album for no reason for the simple reason that I don't like the album. I don't need another reason. Cameron. And if I Ooh. could come up with a better reason, I would say it. However, I unfortunately do not have the musical lexicon to give a better reason. In the future, then, in that case, can you... In the future, I will try. say, I don't like the album instead of this album is bad for the reason that I don't like it. Can no. you not imply that the only music that you like is good music and anything that you don't like is bad music by default without no, because, at least without no. at least defending your standpoint no. somewhat outside Alex, of Alex, Alex, it Alex. sounds bad? Alex, my answer is no, because that wouldn't get the people going. 
Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's a so part of the character. It's, it's a, a culture. It's a part of the culture. Exactly. It's, you're, it's you're not just, some, just, just you're whenever you're I say that something is bad, just in your head, just translate it, okay? Like, that that's not my problem, all right? Like, I'm... It, it, it wouldn't bother me. It would... I would be so much happy if you're like, it's boring. I don't like it. Because it didn't entertain me. And that's why it I sucks. Mean, let me okay, say I would argue that something being war- boring is worse than it being bad. That's fair. But that, that's that's in my opinion. One thing that I would say is, and the only reason the only reason I'm even asking that you make this distinction is because last week you said that Blueface Baby was a that Famous Creep was a good album. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece <laughs> for the reason that you like it. And it, and I mean, I, I said many, begin, a great many other reasons, yeah. which all, we, which we all boil, that which all boil really down to, I like the album and it's good, and these other albums that I didn't like, by extension of the fact that my opinion is the arbiter of good and bad on an album, means that they are bad. No, when, no, no, when, I know when, what it is. Reality, which is accurate. The, the, when in reality, the real situation is, I don't like the album for... What I'm gonna because say is bad. basically you know no what reason. It, it's and fine because, because he finished the album, like okay. And I, also, I he's got to pick an album to shoot every every said, time. I didn't finish the album, and then I could at least tell myself that the reason he doesn't like it is because he didn't listen to it. A <laughs> 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 man listened to the entire album and still couldn't think of a reason that he didn't like it, so he's just like, it's bad. Which I mean, you, whatever floats your boat, honestly. I mean, I, you want to, do you want me to try to say more about why I don't like no, some No, I think we should move on to Jack's album before I blow a blood vessel in my brain. I, I've, I've never heard surf rock before in my life. I didn't know that was a phrase, but I, I don't think I like this thing that I'm hearing. Yeah. Have you listened to the Beach Boys? Or like, Feel you know, free to defend yourself vein. now instead of having to uh, defend never. Like in the beginning. I mean, well, what are other things in that vein? It's I've just, never listened to Beach Boys. It's just the same thing. It's just slower rock compositions. Have and, you ever yeah. seen Pulp Fiction? I, Oh, it's it's it's. Uh, yes. Surf- you know, like half the music in the movie. I don't recall music in movies ever. Right, well, I can't help either of them. S- surf yeah, rock is like. Well, surf rock is is yeah, like Cruz says, it's kind of not necessarily slower, but kind of chill out with compositions, but also with like a like clean guitar sound that's like lots of tremolo picking and these weird scales and stuff. It's it's not, it's it's got a very specific sound. You 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 you'll know it well, when you hear it that. again when you hear it again yeah. yeah after you having heard this you'll be like oh i get it but I, i've had discussions with alex where like i literally could not name a classic rock band and so like <laughs> there's, there's certain subgenres of rock that like i'm just yeah 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 i so know it's, nothing it's, about it's fine so. yeah but anyway my album is uh i, I believe if, I, if i'm not um if I'm not misremembering, I believe the translated name of the album is Zero Comma Colorful World by... Uh, oh, yes, it is the Japanese album. By Mass of the Fermenting Drags, which oh. is a very inconvenient to say name. Are we on the Weeaboo album now? Yes, the Weeaboo album. No, we already did Cameron's album. <laughs> <laughs> no, that song's for Westaboos, honestly. But yeah, so... um, The band is... um. They've been around for a while. They uh, they uh, released their first like EP in 2006, um, and they uh, they actually they broke up after this album, and then they just released one this year after re- getting back together, and that's what got me listening to them again. Um, I, I listened to them in the past. Their um their first two albums, which are they say they're albums, but they're EP length, but people treat them as albums, whatever. Um, they um. People, um, they're kind of like YouTube recommendation core, you know, or like kind of like Plastic Love, where it's like, oh, a lot of people found this just because they it got recommended them on, on YouTube. But um, yeah, and they're pretty popular on 4chan, the the two EPs. But this is this was their um, third album, first full length, uh, at least in 2010. I like it a lot. Uh, I listened to the EPs first, and I just eventually found my way to listen to this. And I've listened to a lot since. I liked a lot. It's kind of um, I wouldn't. They get described as many different genres. Uh, sometimes people will say they're like shoegaze. Sometimes people will be like, oh, they're math rock. And this is, but like, really, it's just kind of like emo without the trademark uh, whiny white male vocals. 
Yes, yeah, so it's bad. With... <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you, 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 you buy, like, a, a sandwich, and they fucking give you a tomato, like... I'm here for the yeah. whining. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. I like to hear how you guys think about it. Just... Yeah, I, I uh, had... Go for it, Alex. I listen to a lot of math rock. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to call this album a math rock album because on the super the super broad side it, it really just is a math rock album yeah most most people do refer to them as a math rock and, album, well, at so. least at least this album's been doing i mean i haven't listened to their other music obviously yeah. so i don't i can't speak for that but this album specifically is definitely mathy and I, I'll, I'll concede generally like my math rock instrumental rather than with vocals but it right. it's the kind of thing where it's really really generic but it's it's good genetic like it's really generic of something that's good, so it's okay that it's generic because at least it's still good. Do you know what I mean? It's not like how you get like I know what you mean. There's like generic rap music or generic yeah. anything that's like wow this is bad. It's like on the on the general math rock. You know, it yeah. just sounds like a Trico album to me, and I think that what this is is like, it's the kind of thing where whatever your gateway is into any genres, but like so math rock here, whatever your gateway is into math rock, you're gonna end up comparing everything to that right. until you get to something that's like completely different. But it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, if your first math rock band was Trico, for example, you're really gonna like this album. Because you'd be really hard pressed to find the difference between a Trico album and this album, which is not a bad thing, because it's like, it's still it's good. It's not like somebody made a bad Trico album, which would be worse. Or like it's not like somebody made a bad like you know, uh, like Tide Edit or something album. It's like they just made a, it's just some Japanese vocals over some math rock. Which, I'm not gonna claim that that's reinventing the wheel or anything, but it's, it's and I mean good. To be, to be fair, this this band was around before Trico, so. But, but you know what I mean is that. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but like I, it is, it is, it, it would, it would, it would but I'm. Yeah, like a Trico album. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm Trico just saying. It sounds like a mass of the fermenting dregs album. But I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying that like if if one were to have been copying the other, it would be Trico copying mass. And see, that's fair, but yeah. I, it's just, I think that, I mean, I would have to listen to this entire band's discography to really make an accurate like yeah. to really accurately make the claim I'm about to make but I think that between my favorite Trico album and this album or like just well I can't even say favorite Trico like like the average to this yeah but I mean it's more refined because it's newer like Trico stuff's newer to this and you know right. they do other shit like, yeah. it's not a bad thing it's I mean it's still good it's just I feel like I didn't remember anything about it that I was like this is like I'm gonna write this on a piece of paper and so I can remember this and like put it in my wallet and take it out and look at it and smile. You know, I was like, this is just. <laughs> if, if somebody's like, if you know, ten minutes or twenty years from now, somebody's like, recommend me some math rock, Alex. I'd be like, well, you know, do you like Japanese vocals? And if they say yes, I'll be like, here's two albums you can listen to. Pick the one you want to listen to. And I'll give them this one and a Trico album probably. Yeah. I I, I, I would get back to me on the difference. I would I would recommend that you listen to the uh the at least listen to the EPs because I I do think that it is the popular opinion that the EPs are better than this. That's um, right. but they I, I they're not on Spotify so it's kind of. I don't seek out the vocal math rock and maybe I do need to make a change. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Cameron? So, um, so I, as. So I'm just a we've already stated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get the ball rolling. Let's get. Let's go. Uh, one on one on the zero to one scale. Yes, uh, on the binary scale. <laughs> this is a one. Uh, this is the the one. So I'm gonna just say, this album's better than my album, in my opinion. Oh, I would wow. also 100% agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um the, at the first listen, I was just chilling and like it, it sounded interesting but then the second listen on something clicked and this album's a masterpiece um i it's something just the mix between her like peaceful vocals and just like the distorted guitar is just perfect for like 
mellowing me out essentially throughout the week like it just it just made me like calm it just like slowed my heart rate in a real nice way um have you listened to Trico before? Just before we, before I listened we... to a song. It came on in like um, related songs, and um, I, I don't remember anything. No, you will. You, I, if, I guarantee I... you that you'll really, really enjoy Trico as well. Though there's at least two bands you can get out of this then. <laughs> um. So. At the very least. I, I like the band name and the album cover, and uh, the only song that I disliked was uh, the second song, just because it's. Out of all of the songs, it's just the only one that isn't that wasn't memorable. What's the name of that song? <laughs> um, so I, I devised um, a system for naming the songs in which each song is the number of characters. Okay. So I realized that I could just call them, you know, track one, track two. Track <laughs> is that, wait, wait, hold on. Did you say before or after you realized that? Before you realized before, you could just call them track two? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if so, it was after, so, like, you're on another fucking level. Like. So, so the name of the album, the name of the songs are 13, okay. um, 10, 8, Rats, 1 Day, okay. 6, 3, 7, and 5. Wait, you didn't stick with calling Rat 3 and then 1 Day 6? <laughs> Um, oh. No, because there's also there's already a three and a six. Wow. All right. <laughs> Wait, so. is 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 that horizontal line with a tail at the end? That's not a hyphen. That's a character. Do you count what? that on, I, on, okay, on track so, eight? On track eight, the the fucking line, the long <laughs> horizontal line. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's a that, that is a character. Um, it's, also in, it's also in the track sixth two <laughs> might be misnamed because um on my phone the circle and the hyphen were like just as big as all the other characters and looking at it here they're they're not exactly as um yeah. profound as their own characters but whatever <laughs> i'm still calling it 10 so my least favorite song was 10 and my second least favorite song was 13 um i i liked at first i really didn't like 13 either but um i i grew to enjoy it but um um, ten to me is, is still just filler, but every song that is in ten is like insane. Um, I especially like um near the end of one day. There is uh, hold on, match two's hard. Uh, just big brain. <laughs> <laughs> At the near the end of one day, there's this is part. Um, he's, they're doing some wild shit with the guitar, and it sounds like um, like like uh, something you would hear in a uh, "Lift Your Skinny Fist," and I like that a lot. And then, I especially um, the ending is uh, one of the like best ending songs I've heard um, to an album in like a long ass time. Uh, just her like like yell singing at the very end just doing the ah you know whatever like that shit hit me and the album and i had to listen to it again yeah i listened to this album like 20 times yeah i, I appreciate it man you really like trico i i i will say i like this better than I've, I've listened to Trigo's three albums and i'd like this one better than all of them but i i haven't listened to them nearly as much as i have listened to this one the but like this album has just like grown on me so much since i first listened to it because the first time i listened to it was just like i was it was just like i didn't the reason i was listening to it was because the eps weren't on spotify and this was that's why i was listening to it at first but as i listened to it more and more it just kept growing and growing on me it used to like i used to have it on like my album chart very very like low somewhere you know past the 50 mark now it's it's in the top 20 now it's Every time I listen to it, I like it more and more. Same. I and it's not this album's fault, but I I use some I tend to have the opposite reaction with at least vocal math rock because I run into the problem. Which I mean, it's a thing a problem I have with a lot of albums that have vocals in general is that I mean, the more I listen to it, the more I just like find things that I don't like about the way the singer sings. So it's like it's the point where it's like, damn, dude, if they just didn't have the singer here, it would actually be better. And, and then the ultimatum is like, if I'm able to make that decision, and if I'm if I'm not able to make that decision, then I can just get over it because I'm like, well, it has to be here, so I might as well just deal with it. But I just there's certain 
parts where I'm like, I, I mean, and when I say vocals, I mean like I'm fine with the, you know, the parts where it's just like kind of vocalizations where it's just like ah, or like you know some kind of yeah, just like they're hold like holding a note. Right. But there's sometimes where I just wish it was like more. I wish it was just this like they just had instrumental versions of some of the tracks. So I think that would just make it. A little I mean, more. like I, I I know part of like I get that part of the appeal too is the kind of like juxtaposition between like here's the music and then here's the feminine voice you know doing this 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 and this like though that's an element to it and that adds to it but I feel like the more I listen to this album the less I would like it because I've had that experience with other albums that are uh, in the same genre um, with I mean and. It's not just like a Japanese language thing. It's just like all around. It's just like a vocal quality thing that I just can't get over at some point. I mean, I guess, I guess I understand. But to me, like, especially with Japanese music, because I, I do listen to uh, quite a bit. I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but I, I yes, I am a fucking weeaboo. But uh, I, I do listen to, you know, a good bit of Japanese music. And to me, it's like, because I don't understand the language, the uh, vocals often always feel like they have that kind of quality of them just being like nonsense, where it's like, it might as well be ooze and ahs, you know? And like, <laughs> and I, I guess that's, that, that's, that's kind of degenerate, where it's like, yeah, I don't care about this entire aspect of the album. I don't care. But, but I, I, do, I do like the vocal performance, but it is it is like something where it's like, you know, it doesn't detract in any way, and I don't. I don't feel like it um, takes away any focus because, like, it it effectively just ends up being another instrument, right? And I agree with you there, but I think the other side of the coin is: does it add anything? And to me, while it doesn't take anything away, I don't think that it adds anything. And at that point, it seems like having another instrument in the mix is a distraction to me, at least to me personally. Mm. When it comes to this kind of it's it's something that I don't know. It's something that's hard to explain, and it's very hard to like. It's hard to get people who don't think about music the same way to like. Not understand that because there's not really anything to understand, but like to kind of like not understand why I had the problem, but understand what I mean when I say it. Because the thing too is that the the vocals and songs that I really like are also just some shit that people really fucking hate a lot of the time, and it's just like there's just certain elements that I just like can't help but like look for hmm. which is a distraction in a genre where my introduction to it was for like the first i'd say probably 50 percent of the genre that i listened to was all instrumental and then it's like here's another element here's another type of the same thing where we have some words now and it's like oh this isn't as good and i want it to be as good as it could be and the easiest way to do that to me is just sack the lead singer, and not you, or just have them on stage not doing anything. But it's already kind of what they're doing anyway in my mind. Mm. In some cases, the lead singer to me is crucial. Like if this was just instrumental, I'd, I'd probably just think it would hit the boring category. Cause... And I and I have to disagree with you there because I think that the music is still really, like, good. It's the other thing too is there's it's not a problem but there's just an element also where it's like it's like the juxtaposition between like the type of music and the type of vocals like that crossroads is like it's not shock factor because there's nothing like it's not shocking but it's like the point of that being the point of there being a divide there is to give you something else to think about and pay attention to, which I think is just like. I mean, that's your opinion. It, like, it's just like, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying what I, what I think is right, that right. it's just extra to me, which is why I would rather a lot of this kind of stuff just be straight instrumental because all it's doing is adding. Because if it was vocals that matched the tone, at least I would feel like they were putting them in there because they wanted them to, like, because the point was the song's supposed to have words in it and not the song is supposed to make you the words are supposed to make you feel a certain way about the song mm -hmm. and that's just the way i look at this genre at like 
well, all music, but especially this genre on the whole. It's kind of it's kind of interesting because I like I kind of have a very different specific experience with math rock because like a lot of the stuff that I listen to that's in the genre is vocal. So, you know, to me, like the the it's when I hear the just like the purely instrumental math rock, that's like like pure math rock and not like math core or something like that. Yeah, I think it's like considered math core. I mean, I. I don't think this is heavy enough for math. On Wikipedia, it had it as post hardcore. Also, yeah, this doesn't feel like that's that's. I mean, post hardcore is kind of just is you know math core. Math core is under that. So I mean, yeah, I would say, I would say that this is like technically like math core i guess but you know a lot of the stuff that i that i listen to in like the, the math rock space is vocal I'll up space and, again. <laughs> and uh the um and so when i so i have kind of the opposite problem I, like sometimes i will listen to some a lot of the instrument the purely instrumental math rock stuff and i'll be like uh these like a lot especially a lot of like pure math rock that is purely instrumental is like there's so much focus on just like you know the like clean lead, clean lead guitar tap tap flexing, flexing you know it's just like and it's it's like that stuff is impressive and I like it a lot but it's well it also when, it, when that's like on, most of the album it's just like oh it also can't. depends on what you're like you get some I know that a while ago you had put a U slut album up yeah which is definitely like in that space Flex. yeah. But there's also math rock stuff where it's like, it's way less like. It's like you have two options. You either make the person who's listening to the music feel something through the words, and the music are the backdrop, or you make somebody feel something through the music and the words are the backdrop. And at the point that you're gonna choose the second option, I feel like a better solution is just remove the vocals and make somebody feel something through the music, full stop. And I feel like there's there's songs and there's albums and in in all genres, not just math rock or anything or math core, that do that well. And I think there's some that don't. And I think that this album is on the higher side of not doing it for me. But I get like I 100% get what Cameron is saying about how it, it it's like it's it helps you feel something. But I think that the for me the direction that it takes me isn't where the music is taking me which is something that i don't like because it's making me feel like it's making me feel like they feel like they have to have like have that there for you to feel what they're trying to put out with it i guess i understand I mean, I, I disagree, but I guess I understand. I think she's a good singer, and she wants to sing and a... play bass at the same time. I wouldn't say she's a bad singer. What do you say about singing and playing bass at the same time? <laughs> what? Wait, what, she, what, she, what? Does, she, she does it, and she, she does it well. She's the bass player. Okay, so like Getty Lee. Yeah. Uh, Is this sure. a three-piece? Does anybody know? How many they are a three. I mean, currently they are. I think in the past they were. They might have not have been. But I know that their current lineup is a three piece, and I think that for this album it was also a three piece. Is it Triple Girl? Uh, no, no. I think no. they started as a girl. as a. Or... I think they started as a three girl lineup, and I think now they're a got one girl and two guys. Gotcha. I um, my opinion on this album. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot cruises in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. This album's like forgettable um i think there are i i'm gonna have to like agree with cameron and alex on certain things like um there's some times where i'm like okay this vocal performance is actually outperforming the song and i'm really enjoying this and then there's some times where i'm like the the instrument performance is just so rad and then like like uh it I'm not saying that she shouldn't be there. I'm just saying that I would like to be able to pay attention more because she does draw attention from like my listening experience. But um, I I tried so hard to be like, okay, I'm gonna remember some of these songs names even though they're in Moon Runes. 
and I think my, my favorite one is definitely the I, I thought of it as the half C with a T on top and an H which is the ninth song or Cameron would, would say song five <laughs> it's got the it's got the left sharp bracket at the end yeah. <laughs> um, you also call it track nine yeah. and five but uh, I think that was my favorite well that was the only one where I was like okay I have to look at my phone now even though I'm busy just so I can I can say that I liked one of the songs that I, I, I will thoroughly enjoy this at least one song the rest of it is just like it it when I listen to math rock I really really like the flexing because if you're gonna be a math rock or a math core band fucking just 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 do it right like like don't don't try to be like oh we're not like that or like, like just fucking kill it show me what you got i mean that, that, that that's that, that's one of the reasons i was hesitant to just straight up say this is a math rock album yeah when we started for me i didn't because... even listen to this as math rock i just i, I didn't well, I know what the you fuck it was i just thought something. it was music like as met like yeah. You don't want to be like this is math rock, so where's when's the flexing gonna happen? Yeah. It's like this it didn't really just... occur to me that like this was math rock for a bit until yeah, I realized it, that like this, it kinda is. The the album does have some of the like, you know, com- complex like arrangements that you will you would see in math rock. And the tone sometimes, and the tappings but, of but the it's it's yeah. it's it's very it's not focused on as much and you definitely don't have like the kind of well if i just didn't like focus focus on that i think if i if i was just like yes this is music like if i didn't have that pre juxtaposition on the genre or the genres relating to what this is like i think i would have enjoyed it more actually yeah and this is one of those like not to interrupt you jack but this is like this is an album that in the same way that my favorite album of all time is Home Alone by Totoro, this is an album where it's like, if this is your introduction to the genre, this is going to be the pinnacle. And everything that you're going to listen to afterwards, you're going to think in terms of this album. And so it's the things you like about this album, you're going to like about other albums that are in the same vein. And the things that you don't like about other albums are going to be because they're not doing the things that you thought were really good about this album. And that's just, I mean, that's not, I mean, that's how it is in all genres, at least in my mind. And I think that that's, like, the aspects that are really, like, clicking with you about this Mass of the Fermenting Dragon album are going to be your checklist for deciding what you think about, you know, your first, like, Chan album or something is going to be how is it compared to this. So if you really like, I don't know what Cruz's introduction was. But if he really likes the flexing on the first Math Rock album he heard, and this album doesn't have the flexing, it's not going to be this. He's not going to be able to get into it as much because it doesn't have the thing that he's looking for when he thinks about a Math Rock album. And, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't be looking for that. Like that's just just unfair to them. Yeah, I, 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 but it, you can't help it. It's just the way it is. You want every album you listen to to be the best album you like. Ever I just heard hear the first sick riff, and I'm like, this is Math Core. This is Math Rock. Like that's just just what happens. I, well, and it is, I wish so. I didn't, honestly, so I could actually pay attention to it more. But and I, and I do I think, think it's going forward, Cameron's gonna really like other math rock that sounds like this and not like stuff well, that goes I, a different I, direction. I, I, I we both know that I've listened to math rock before. Yeah, but if you ever get deeper, like if you get deeper to the point, like, like if you get super deep into it, you're gonna be looking for stuff that's similar to this. If you had that favorable and strong of a reaction to this, um, probably. Like that's, that's just that's just the way but, it is. Like, there's nothing you can yeah. do about it. It's just how for, it is. For me, it's kind of like how I like Vampire Weekend less because... Or Sgt. Pepper less because, for me, there's already Modest Mouse and... Yeah. And it's like, if it's, well, if it's not going to be Modest Mouse, why doesn't it try to get as close as it can? Yeah. Like, what, are they, what are they doing by not just trying to get as close as they can to the thing that is really good? Yeah. I, I don't tend to think of it that way. But I, I can see why you would think that way, I guess. And why how your feelings reflect this the feeling feelings of this album reflect that um what was i gonna say i had something i completely forgot i had something that i thought was important to say and i forgot it which is unfortunate but um yeah i was when i i was originally hesitant to say it was a, a math rock album because i i when i even though i, I know when we were discussing which i was going to pick i i did say it and i think that was actually a mistake but um I would have thought the same thing. It didn't matter if you said if it was or not, because 
I can hear it. it. Is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've listened to the the genre or the the. the but oh yeah, the, the other thing I wanted to say was um. I. Well, I like this album a lot. I do think it's kind of um, you know, you, Cruz, you were saying that you kind of had a hard time you know distinguishing the songs. It's, it's all and it's like obviously when it's in a foreign language, it's hard, right? And that's something that I've noticed with um, when I've listened to like Japanese music. <laughs> And other language music because I have listened to music in other languages. Don't I'm not just a weeaboo, mm. but um, is that, is that is that it? it def, I am a French boo. It is that it takes a lot of listens for me to like, you know, know in my head before I listen what each one sounds like by just looking at the title, you know, and that's like oh, you're on a different level, and that's not something that uh it, and like obviously for most people it's like. Like obviously for, for for most like English language albums, it's like oh you, you can look at the title and it's like oh I heard that line in the song somewhere so I know what it sounds like right, but you know obviously that's uh it's a lot harder when you're uh, listening to foreign language album, but um or just instrumental stuff in general too oh yeah and instrumental stuff, but um like even with instrumental stuff there's times where it's like you can. If you look at the title while you're listening to it, because it's because it's something in a language you know you can attach onto it easier, right? And of course that requires you to look at it, but um I can say that I would be one hundred percent lying if I said that I knew the names of all the songs based on the sounds of like any math rock album I've ever listened to. Right. Yeah. Like it's just I mean, a thing really... that doesn't it just it just yeah. doesn't lend itself well to the style a lot of the time. Oh yeah, yeah. But I I I'm just saying that, you know, when maybe when Cruz is saying like that um, not everything was memorable. You know, maybe there's a degree to which it would have been more maybe so he's memorable. Racist is what you're if saying. they were, yeah, maybe he's just fucking racist. Me. Well, I'm just but... saying if there was a cute boy <laughs> yelling about his feelings, I probably would have liked it more. So <laughs> like, certainly they, they do, they do I, make I, for that feel. I certainly would have hated that shit. This shit. <laughs> I'm almost positive. And I do want to reiterate, even given all the discussion we've had, this is still a really good album. That's it's a quality just, album. It's it's Definitely. really good because it does the same thing that, at least based on where my ears go with this, it does the same thing that about fifty other albums do well, just as well. It doesn't take anything up a notch and it doesn't bring anything down a notch. It just does. It sticks to what it knows and it doesn't try to pretend to be something that it's not, which I think is more admirable than if they tried to give it some really stupid like ploy that just didn't work. So it's still good. It's just I think that it, I think that with what they had, they they had the opportunity to make something great, and just made something good. Mm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Well, if you guys don't have anything else to say on it, if, if, I I do want to point out that um. Well, I I want to say first off, like, rat fucking banger. I, every time I every time I hear that song come on, I see hear that opening uh, bass line. I'm like, uh, I'm like, damn, I'm in for a good time. That reminded um, me of some fucking like '90s grudge song. The uh, the ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, uh, and I just could not stop thinking about that song. Like, why <laughs> why is she doing this? Like, I I couldn't pay attention to that whole song because of that. Like, it just I just thought about something else. She just she trailed me off. Like. <laughs> The uh the the like kind of B section of the song where they're not doing that part and there's the like the tremolo guitar playing is an, is an example of what I've what I notice more and more as I listen to it is that the uh the guitar playing on the album feels like it is feels in a lot of ways like it's surf rock inspired because it's um the the guitar tone across most of the album is there there are parts where it's very heavily distorted but there but for a lot of it it is only lightly like overdriven and there's a lot of like tremolo picking in parts and it's just like it really reminded me of some surf rock stuff. So so that was something that and that was actually something I didn't really notice until like this week listening to it for the for this. Um Yeah. I think it's a rad album. Seven out of ten. Cool. That's better than I think it's the best you've given an album that I've told you about, so it's the best album you've recommended. Yeah. Not the highest rating in the podcast, though. It's in the radio show so far, though. So I'll tell you that much. <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, so that was uh, episode two of uh, WLTM. 
I am. Visit uh visit our website because that we definitely have and uh our website, subscribe. our Patreon. Oh uh, yeah, um, hit up the hit up our Twitter. Like, oh yeah, actually, 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 actually hit the fucking bell. Too. Jokes aside, uh, something that actually is probably important is that uh from now on we will be uh announcing the albums we pick about a week in advance, uh probably like the day after, um we do the pod we upload the the last episode we're gonna announce on our boy Cruz's Twitter. The uh, albums for next mm. week. So uh, go follow him if you actually want to like listen along and be, be ready. Uh, at uh, I don't know what your fucking I Twitter. I don't know what your Twitter is. K I L L E N. It'll be in the description of the video. Yeah, he'll put he'll put it in the the description. I changed my follow our socials. Oh, did you? Yeah. All right. See you. See you next time, losers. Next album is Super Discount. No, super discount two. Super discount three, super baby. Discount we, harder. One day. Groupon. Super Groupon. <laughs> All right.